Warning, this game contains content that might not be suitable for most audiences. Viewer's discretion is advised. You've been cooped up at home for far too long and you feel like going out today. Where do you want to go? Uh, oh, okay, bookstore, cafe, university, bakery. Let's go to the bookstore. You decide to head to a local bookstore. The bell chimes when you walk in. There are various crystals and herbs on the shelves, and it smells like someone's been burning incense. It feels cozy in here. Also, why does this bookstore look familiar? You look around before approaching a neatly stacked display and pick up something that catches your eye. Uh, horror novels, tarot cards. Yeah, I'm gonna pick up the horror novel. You pick up a novel with a bloody knife on the front. That's a great one. Huh? If you're looking for something psychological, that's a solid choice. Really gets under your skin. You flip the book over and read the synopsis. It certainly seems chilly, but you're honestly more interested in the guy recommending it to you. Whoa, thanks. Seems right up my alley. I'm lying, by the way. I'm Salvador. Or just Sal, if you'd like. You smile back at him. Nice to meet you, Sal. So, what brings you in today? Anything I can help you find? Yeah, just by Flirt? No, I'm, I'm gonna flirt. <laughs> you give him a coy grin. Actually, I lost my phone number. Could I have yours? <laughs> That's a new one. He takes out his phone and offers it to you so you can input your number, and you do the same. You can't believe that actually worked. Since I can venture a guess that you're interested. Lion, what sort of music do you like? Indie, pop, metal, punk, or rock. Wait, not punk. Rock, rock. I'm into rock, actually. Nice. There's some good stuff out lately. But that's not to say I can't be adventurous. I like all kinds of music. Adventurous, huh? You blush at your choice of words. If you're serious, I'm off in five and no place that plays good music. Who knows? You might like it. Uh, yeah, let's, let's go. You think some interesting music way of sell is precisely how you want to spend your evening. You know, I think that sounds fun. I'd love to join you. Great. Let me close up the store and we can go. You can feel the music pound in your chest when you walk into the club with Sal. Here we are. You look around at the scene in front of you. There are people dressed in dark clothes, dancing in a tight crowd on the floor. And upstairs, you can see some private tables. Gonna get you a drink, or would you like to dance? Ooh, wait. Wait, I have a bad feeling about this. I know what sort of game I'm playing. I know getting a drink is a bad idea. Let's get a drink. I, I need a drink before I dance. I think I'll take you up on that drink, Sal. He smiles, coming right up. You weave through the crowd and wander to an unoccupied corner of the club, flagging Sal down once you see him returning with the drinks. Here you go. They're both the same. Take whichever you like. Something about that reassures you. If you had put something in your drink, he wouldn't, get it, he wouldn't risk getting it himself. Thanks. You take a sip. You don't recognize whatever he ordered, but it tastes amazing. Some sort of sweet cocktail that almost smells like a little bit like roses if you squint. Wait, why would it smell like roses if I squint? Do I, do I just sniff with my eyeballs? Is that a thing I do now? Can I can I sniff him with my eyeballs? So, Sal. Uh, do you live around here? What do you do for fun? Do you have any pets? What do you do for fun? He smirks. Besides taking cute pets to nightclubs, you mean? He blush and swat his arm playfully, and he laughs. Kidding. I'm a witch, so I like to research my practice in my spare time. Oh, that's cool. Thank you. I also play guitar and go hiking a lot, and I love to read. I'm very rarely bored. Do you live around here? You live nearby? Yeah, I take the main road out of town, and from there, I live about a 30-minute drive into the woods. Wow, doesn't that get lonely? Sometimes, I don't have any neighbors for miles, so the solitude is peaceful. But you're right. It would be nice to have someone to spend time with. I don't let it get to me, though. Yeah, I don't ever feel truly alone. Do you have any pets? Yeah, unfortunately not. I love cats. I love to have one. If I wasn't so anxious about it running away and getting hurt. Who knows? Maybe a pet is in my future. You look around the mass of bodies on the dance floor and think it might be fun to join them. You know, I'd love to dance. Sal takes your hand. Lead the way. You lead Sal into the crowd and begin moving to the beat with him. It feels good getting out and dancing, and after a while, you both get lost in it. The two of you, the longer the two of you dance, the more you feel your body heating up. Sal brushes against you and you gasp. Even the slightest touch makes you blush and squirm. Something feels wrong. You expect the dancing to make you sweaty, but this... Yeah. Everything okay, Lion? Yeah, just, uh, been a while since I've been out like this. 
He gives you a knowing look. You can't help but notice he's blushing too. Uh-huh. He holds out his hand in an invitation to dance closer to him. Knowing you're playing a dangerous game, you take his hand and allow him to pull you against him. You like how he dances, and in your current state, it feels nice the way he holds you. His hand only lingers on your body long enough to drive you crazy. You feel like you need him to touch you, or you'll die. Your resolve breaks, so you finally grab Sal's face, crushing his mouth into yours. <laughs> his face! Sal, can we go somewhere private? You can hardly believe the words coming out of your mouth, and yet you feel too desperate to imagine asking for anything else. He catches his breath and looks around quickly before grabbing your wrist and leading you off. The music is not any quiet in the bathroom, Sal pulls you into, much to your relief. Otherwise, someone may have heard the moan escape your throat while Sal drags you into a stall and slams you against the door. Sal leans in to kiss you hot, his hands roaming your body and squeeze you in all the right places. He roughly takes your hand, tucks your hair to the side, sucking dark bites into your throat. Oh god. Sal. He shoves his leg between your thighs and you roll your hips down, grinding against him for some relief. His voice is hot against your ear. Don't worry, sweet thing. I'll make you feel better. Oh! Cuck! <laughs> After a short while, Sal pulls out of you carefully and helps you start cleaning up. You're both readjusting your clothes when he speaks again. I hope I wasn't too rough with you. I can't get a little carried away. That yeah, was really nice, actually. He smirks. Nice enough that you consider seeing me again? Yes, please. I like that, Sal. Me too. Come on, we'll take you home. I lived? I want to see a bad end. Right, so what if I dance instead? You look around at the mass of bodies on the dance floor and think it might be fun to join them. You know, I love to dance. Sal takes your hand. Lead the way. Wait, is this the same thing? The bodies around the two of you press you in tight. Not give you much choice other than to dance practically on top of Sal. Not that he particularly seems to mind, however. His touches on you are shy of lingering, and a part of you wishes he'd go a little further. The more songs pass, the more antsy you get. Your body burns where Sal touches you, and you decide to take matters into your own hands. Be forward, be subtle. I will be forward. You've had enough of him being a gentleman. Grabbing Sal's hand, you guide him... You guide them along your body while you dance, feeling him hesitate at first before grabbing your hips in his palms. He's a little stronger than you're participating, but feels nice. He leans down to talk against your ear. Keep that up and I think you're after something. What if I am? He pulls your body against his. Then I think we should probably get out of here, huh? You smirk and follow him towards the door. A second, the two of you pass through the threshold of his front door. He's pinning you to the wall and sucking dark bites into your neck. Ugh, Sal. He doesn't waste time, showing you through his cabin. He picks you up with a strength that surprises you and carries you to his room with your legs around his waist. When he drops you onto his bed, you make a soft noise that causes him to smirk as he undoes his belt. Alright, sweet thing. Want me to be rough with you or treat you nice? Uh, be rough? Hell yeah! You eye the belt in his hand and bite your lip before meeting his gaze. Hurts me. You see a look that your better senses may have considered dangerous flash in his eyes before he grins, his expression hungry. Anything you want, Angel. Hey, yo, what are you doing with that belt? Sal lets you catch your breath for a few moments before gingerly pulling out of you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, don't be. Feels good. Sal attentively cleans you up and makes sure you're comfortable, and you feel properly spoiled. I could get used to this. Sal smirks at you. So could I. So, same time next week, you know where to find me. Isn't there a bad ending in this game? Or... Or am I just gonna, like, raw dog everyone here? Right, so what if I offer something else? Actually, I was going to suggest something like a hike. Sal smiles when you say this. I love hiking. Do you want to pick the trail or should I? Uh, well, you pick. You can pick this time. Great, let me close up the store and we can go. The trail Sal takes you to is about half an hour outside town, but it's absolutely gorgeous. This is one of my favorite trails. Sal leads you down a path he's picked out for the two of you, and you take your time admiring the beauty of the woods surrounding you. He shows you to a meadow full of wildflowers, a mossy grove speckled with mushrooms where you find some deer bones, and finally, you end the trail at the base of a waterfall that stretches up the rocks. Your gaze travels up the falls in, am in amazement. Sal, this is beautiful. 
thank you for showing me this place. Never seen this part of the woods before. I'm glad I could take you here, Lion. This place is special to me. Spent a lot of time out here. I can see why. Before too much longer, the sun starts sinking below the tree line and you realize how tired you're getting. Looks like it's getting to be that time. Wanna head back? You had underestimated how long the hike would be and you find yourself absolutely wiped out. Much your embarrassment. Yeah, yeah, um, ask for some water. You look sheepishly at Cell. Hey, uh, I'm sorry about this, but I'm all out of water and I'm parched. Can I have a sip of yours? You blush. Think it a little too hard about both of you sharing the same water bottle. Oh my god, an indirect kiss. <laughs> he smirked and offers you his water, and you wonder if he knows what you're thinking. Have as much as you like. You gratefully take the bottle and have a sip, as I another. You notice the water is slightly sweet and a little floral, like roses. He hadn't struck you as a flavored water guy. Thanks. It's just what I needed. You pass the bottle back to him and follow him on the path back the way you came, only managing to get a few meters before your head begins to swim. Your body feels like it's on fire, and you feel an unbearably distracting heat building between your legs. Sal, something's wrong. Before I have a chance to react, Sal grabs you and swiftly knocks your skull against a tree. Oh, this is what I wanted! Hell yeah! Sal? Why are we in a cave? Your head pounds as you awaken. There's nothing compared to the urgent, distracting throb between your legs. Ugh. Whatever it was in a water bottle, it made you unable to focus on anything more than how badly the pain you're feeling turns you on. Ah, you're awake. Cell comes into blurry focus in front of you, and you try to scramble to your feet only to discover you're chained down. Cell? What's going on? Where are we? The rush of your ears doesn't fade the longer you're awake, and you realize you're in a cave behind a waterfall. We're somewhere private. You're going to help me, Angel. Help you? You notice candles lit around the cave, and there's a pentagram drawn in chalk on the ground beneath you. There are metal hooks hanging in places, and, on, and old blood stains on the walls and floor. You swallow thickly. I don't think... Cell, this can't be real. Can it? He doesn't pay attention to your question as he cuts away your clothes with a large hunting knife, nicking your skin. You thrash and try to protest, but anywhere he cuts you makes you burn with pleasure. Once he's made quick work of your clothes, he starts carving strange symbols into your skin, starting with your arms and working down your legs. Stop! Please! Oh! Oh lord, this is reminding way too much of Price of Flesh. You feel writhing against your back, long hard appendages slithering against your flesh, before seeing the inky black tentacles rise from slowly manifesting portals at the edge of the circle. The feeling is overwhelming. You're drowning in the sensation of heavy shocks pulsing through your dying body. When you feel Cell gently set you back down. Thank you, my angel. As the last dregs of life drain from you, you hear another inhuman voice echo off the cave walls. Thank you for the gift, Salvador. Well, this is what I wanted. It's exactly what I asked for. Thank you. All right, I'm going to ask if there's a shortcut. You clear your throat awkwardly. Sorry, uh... I'm a little tired. I'm a little more tired than I thought. Do you think we can find a shortcut out of here? Cell pulls out his phone and opens up the map. You're surprised that he's getting service out here, but he zooms out from your location and smirks at you when he sees where you are. Well, believe it or not, or maybe a 10 minute walk from where my cabin is. Oh, you blush. Only if you don't mind. Cell backs you up into a tree and you swallow. He leads in to talk uh, against the shell of your ear. The pleasure would be mine. You shiver and urge him in the direction of his cabin. The second the two of you pass through the threshold of his front door, he's pinning you to the wall and sucking dark bites into your neck. Oh, we're back here again! Okay, so picking the spot for your hike just leads to a slight variation in that particular route, so we're not gonna go down that. Instead, we're gonna go into the cafe and see who we meet there. You could use a pick-me-up. You're greeted by the strong scent of fresh coffee when you walk in. The cafe is lively with folks chattering over their drinks, riding at laptops and people watching through the large windows. You approach the register and for a minute, you're caught off guard by all the options on the menu. You can get a black coffee anywhere, you think, but everything else leaves you paralyzed by choice. Uh, if I may be so bold, the cafe brevet here is lovely. Hi! Are those ears real? You didn't notice a cute girl come up from behind you, but it's hard to take your eyes off her now. 
Uh, I will take her advice. Uh, that actually sounds great. You turn to the barista and order a cafe brevet, waiting patiently as it's prepared for you. Taking a careful sip, you exhale and smile at the strange woman. This was a great choice. Thank you. Don't mention it. It's one of my favorites. I make them all the time. Suppose I should mention I work here, actually. Ah, I know the menu like the back of my hand. Well, if you're not too busy, do you want to share a table with me? I'm Lion, by the way. I'm Claire. Lovely to meet you, Lion. You wait patiently for her to place her own order before she responds. And I'd love to sit with you. It's been too long since I've gotten to know someone new. The two of you make your way over to a table by the window and settle in with your drinks. You're the first to speak after you take another sip of your coffee. So, Claire. Uh, I will ask about her interests. So, you're pretty well versed in the field of caffeination. Is that a hobby of yours? Uh-huh, it is. After my first trip to Italy, when I first tried real espresso, I just had to learn how to make it properly. Americans really know how to ruin a good cup of coffee. You get the feeling she's a real posh. Uh, what were you doing in Italy? Studying fashion, I want to be a designer for an indie brand. Whoa, that's so cool. As the two of you finish your drinks, Claire looks decisive. I don't want to stop hanging out with you, Lion. Where should we go next? Uh, museum, shopping, museum, shopping. I'm a go to the museum. I heard a new exhibit just opened at the museum. I'd love to visit it with you, Claire. Wonderful! Let's go! The two of you arrive at the museum, noticing big banners outside advertising the new exhibit. How exciting! It's been ages since I've been here. Where would you like to look? Uh, Baroque. How about we take a look at the Baroque art? Oh, my favorite! Heading over to the Baroque wing of the museum, Claire makes a beeline for a painting of a girl in a flouncy dress on a swing. She sighs wistfully, her ears relaxing as she takes in the art. You like that one? Oh, Lion, I love this piece. It's one of the things that made me get into alternative fashion. Just look at those fabrics. I saw this painting and knew I wanted to make dresses like that. I want to make people feel as pretty as she looks. You have quite an eye for beautiful things. She gives you a flirty look. I picked you out, didn't I? You blush. Uh, impressionist. Let's check out the impressionist. Sure. You wander through the museum to the hall that houses the Impressionist works, admiring the lively brushstrokes and soft lighting in all the paintings. Pausing at a painting of ballerinas, you turn to Claire. You make a cute ballerina. Ah, thanks, Pumpkin. That's also too. That's why I took ballet when I was little. They kicked me out for breaking another girl's ankle, though. You both laugh, but you wonder in the back of your mind what could have made Claire angry enough to break someone's bones as a child. Modern. I'd love to see the modern art. Ooh, gonna be doing some deep thinking? You make your way to the modern art, both of you pausing to reflect on a piece depicting several squ squares and circles. Claire cocks her head, her ears switching. I think it represents the struggle between man and society. I think it represents the inevitability of the end of all things, both significant and mundane. I think it represents my brain splitting in half. Maybe it represents moving on to the next exhibit. Claire takes her hand and leads you towards the signs pointing to the new exhibit, passing by the other museum patrons on your way there. This way, Lion! You walk into a room, housing several statues with a signed poster on the wall reading, Accessible Art. Please feel free to touch the sculptures in this room. Oh, check it out! We're allowed to touch these ones! How neat! You run your hand over the smooth marble of one of the statues, the stone cool beneath your palm. Claire traces a statue in a path that follows yours, both you admiring the delicate chiseling and fine detail work the artist put into the piece. Her fingers brush yours, and you blush a little bit. The two of you move on to a statue of Venus, your hands moving across her body and the long tresses of her hair. Claire watches as your hand caresses the curves of the statue, noticing the reverence that you show. Seems like something's on your mind. You smirk at her. I think that's not a work of art I'd like to touch. She takes your hand and laces your fingers together, nodding towards the door. Well, who am I to deny you life's simple pleasures? Let's get out of here. Claire takes you back to her fancy apartment in the artsy part of town. It's stylish and clean, and has many cute decorations. She hardly gets you through the door before she's on you, kissing you and roaming your body with her hands. Don't be shy, Lion. You can touch wherever you like. You pull her close earning you a cute noise and place her hands on her hips. One snakes around to give her plump ass a squeeze, and you feel her little cottontail flick in your wrist. She moans, 
sliding her hands up your chest to hold your face and kisses you deeply. Your opposite hand travels up her back and pulls at the zipper of her dress, the straps falling from her shoulders. Grab whatever you need from the end table. You wait a few moments, brace yourself above Claire before gingerly pulling out of her. God damn, Lion. Can we make that a regular thing? I think I'd like to do that again. Yeah. When were you thinking? Give me 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Ma'am! Ma'am, I know you're a rabbit, but chill! You feel of. You have a feeling you're in for a long night. You lived. I want to see what happens in a bad end, though. Okay, so I know that we have the option to go shopping, but I want to ask her about her ears first. I've got to know. What's the deal with your ears? Great. Don't tell me you're going to be weird about them. N no, no. They're beautiful. But if you don't want to talk about them, that's fine. Sorry, just on the edge from the last guy insisted they were fake and tried to pull on them. Extremely long story short, some families carry traits of their patron animals in their genes. My family is a proud line of rabbits. Whoa, that's cool. And as we saw, like, yeah, she, she could really go at it like a rabbit. Glad you think so. As the two of you finish up your drinks, Claire looks decisive. I don't want to stop hanging out with you, lad. Where should we go next? Let's go shopping. How about we go shopping? I'd love to see what cute things you pick out. It sounds fun. I'll follow you. The two of you make your way to a fancy shopping district. Claire knows about the streets lined with boutiques and posh accessory shops enticing in customers with elegant window displays. You can't imagine paying the price some of these stores are asking, but employees of a few of the places you walk into seem to recognize Claire. You decide to chat with her as you both browse through the clothes. So Claire, uh, do you live around here? Live around town? Yeah, I live in the art district. Not too far from the cafe, actually. Convenient, since I don't drive. You don't? Yeah, I prefer to walk most places. I love photography, so I'm always finding new subjects while I'm out. That, or I just get someone to drive me where I need to go. Do you like working at a cafe? How's it like working at a cafe? It's not as bad as you think. I enjoy the challenge that I get to try all sorts of delicious coffee. Even if it means I have to hide my ears and tail. How do you do that? Willpower. I hide them when I'm at work because most people think they're fake anyway. I'm fine if people think I'm some sort of cosplayer. They mind their business around here for the most part. If too many people think they're real, I could be a target for trafficking. Oh god, why have about now? Because I trust you, Lion. Um, wow, thank you. Do you have any siblings? Do you have a lot of siblings? Why? Because I'm a rabbit? Well, I mean... I'm teasing, Lion. My extended family's huge! I have two older brothers, Sydney and Eric. They're always looking out for me. I would have... I probably would have gotten into some serious trouble by now if it weren't for them. Can I, can I beat them? Like, I, I know that I'm not going to beat them in this game, but I would love to go at it with a rabbit with her brothers. Frick. <laughs> ah, it's great. That they, it's great that they take care of you. They also don't have a choice. They're a professional bodyguard. That's even hotter! And if they can't keep their own little sister safe, what good are they? Whoa. Cool. Don't let him hear you say it. Those meatheads don't need an ego boost. You look through the tops haplessly, holding one up to yourself, only to realize it is wildly not your style. I don't think I'll be able to find anything, Claire. Now with that attitude, here, let me try something. She peruses a few racks, picking out and rejecting a few pieces before ushering you into a fitting room. I don't know about this. Just trust me. You, hesit you hesitantly try on one of the ensembles she picked out for you, and honestly, you've never felt better dressed. Oh. You open the door to show Claire, and she looks satisfied. See? What did I tell you? You look stunning. Claire, I love it, but I don't know if I can afford this. Don't worry about it. It's on me. What? You look so good in it. It'd be a crime not to dress you up. I... I will kiss her. You pull into the dressing room and quickly latch the door, pushing her up against the wall and kissing her before she has a chance to make a noise. Your tongue slips into her mouth, brushing over her teeth and twisting with hers. She makes a soft sigh and melts into your kiss, her hands coming up to hold your head. Once she starts squirming, you pull back for air and hold a finger up to your lips. She nods, grabbing your hands and planting your palms on her... Well, I guess this is definitely going on Patreon. You both quietly catch your breath in the small dressing room. Helping her readjust her clothes and changing out of your new outfit back into your street clothes. It's a good thing you'll be taking them. Claire nuzzles your jaw to get your attention, her voice low. <sighs> I think that was 
worth a little more than a new outfit. Why don't we check out so I can repay you? You lick your lips. The heat between your legs suddenly very distracting. I could be persuaded to accept your generous offer. She takes your hand and leads you out. You lift. Okay, what if I steal something for her? On the way out of the dressing room, you notice Claire eyeing a cute jewelry set before wistfully setting it back down. She must not be able to justify both that and your new outfit. So casually not attracting any attention and avoiding the security camera, you rip it out of the box and pocket the little jewelry set. As Claire finishes paying, you head out of the store with her. Once you're far enough away from the building, you pull her aside. Hey Claire, I got something for you. You produce the jewelry from your pocket and she looks delighted. Oh lion, I didn't know you had it in you. Just for me? I feel so honored. She places her old jewelry with it immediately. It looks almost the same, but it's very cute on her. Thank you, Lion. I'll treasure them. Hey, as thanks, can I show you someplace special? It would really mean a lot to me. She caresses your cheek and looks at you with dull eyes, and you're at her mercy. Sure, that sounds wonderful. Come with me. A back alley? Claire leads you down several streets, then a few side streets, and eventually you're cutting through alleys. So, what is this place we're going? You'll see. You like the sound of that. You get so distracted thinking about the prospects, however, that you don't notice Claire slip behind you as the two of you walk. It isn't until you hear what sounds like metal clanging be against brick that you turn around, only to come face to face with metal pipe. Yeah! <laughs> Oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, look, I was expecting a good time, okay? I was expecting a really, really gruesome time with all these characters, and I'm just so glad to finally get to them after all those sweetness. Like, holy heck. Okay, Claire, what you gonna do to me? Your head spins violently as you come to. You can hardly think, let alone move. <sighs> Pumpkin... Claire strolls into your field of vision, no longer holding a pipe, but instead a mean-looking switchblade with a pink handle. Oh, my darling. I'm sure you're wondering why you're here. What? What the hell, Claire? Shut up! You shrink back down, a shrill voice making your pounding skull throb. Y you can feel blood caking into your head from where she split the skin. See, honey bear? You're here because I can't let another soul look at you. You're all mine, you understand? You're mine. Forever. She's insane. She is freaking insane. You don't dare speak again. So you sit there, trembling. You desperately glance around, looking for a way out. Noticing two more sets of plomino colored ears out the far windows. Those must be your brothers. That explains how she got you here. You don't stand a chance. Even if you could overpower her or outrun her. Her breathing gets heavy. And she circles you like an animal cornering its prey. <sighs> You're so cute, Lion. You have no idea what you do to me. Strip. Now. She brandishes the knife at you and you flinch, immediately moving to take your clothes off. That's it. Good pet. You watch as she removes her own clothes, blushing, despite yourself. She walks over to you and kicks you back, laying you out on the cold concrete. She straddles you and cocks her head, tracing the blade beneath your jaw. You can hear your heart pounding in your ears and sweat beats at your forehead. Look at this pretty canvas. All for me. <laughs> Oops. You died. Well, um, that was fun. That was real fun. Basically, she just she just kept jabbing the knife into us over and over again. And apparently she really gets off of that. Apparently, that's what happened. Right. I don't know what I'm doing at a university, but I'm gonna go. You're feeling studious. Oh, I'm a university student, I guess. You made the journey across campus and headed to the university's library. The librarian smiles pleasantly at you from the desk when you enter. The atmosphere is nice here. There are individuals studying and small groups chatting quietly or resting between classes. Yeah, after a few moments, the peaceful silence is broken by a strange sound. You could have sworn you just heard a duck in there. I, uh, I'm going to make a quick save, I suppose, okay, and I'm gonna investigate it. Your curiosity gets the better of you as you head into the direction you think the sound came from. Sure enough, you hear it again. You look around, check on the tables and between rows of books, but a mysterious duck eludes you. Just as you're getting ready to give up, you hear it again. 
Your head whips around for the source of the quack, but instead you see someone sat alone in one of the armchairs, stifling giggles behind a large book. Keep looking. I'm sure it's here somewhere. You realize now that there perhaps is no duck. All right, you got me. That was pretty funny. I'm glad you think so. You went to some muse at the senior center. Foul play aside, I'm Hemlock. What if I get your name, ducky? Uh, yeah, I'll give you my name. Something about them charms you. It's Lion. Nice to meet you, Lion. So, Lion, I haven't seen you around here before. What are you up to? Eh, well, I'm just here for fun. I'm a student. Yeah, I... It will be a lot less weird if I said I'm a student. I'm a student here. I usually just study back at my apartment, though. Right on. Tell me about your major. You tell me a little about what you're studying, your classes, and the field you want to get into. Sounds really interesting. Love to hear more about it later. So, what else do you do for fun? Yeah, I like exploring. I like to party. I mostly just work. I prefer to stay at home. What do I do for fun? Uh, man. I mostly just work these days. But then again, I do play, like, plenty of video games. And I do read from time to time. I guess staying at home is, like, my answer here. Yeah, I'm kind of boring. Mostly just stay at home. Nothing wrong with that. Sounds like you could use some excitement, though. I know a place having a party tonight if you're interested. Uh, well, uh, I'm gonna make a safe here, because I think this is where Brent is off. Let's go with him. That doesn't sound half bad to you. You know what, Hemlock? I think I'll go with you to that party. Great, I'll lead the way. The two of you wander through uh, university housing for a bit, passing several friends and sororities with their own doors open, beckoning partygoers. You finally reach a somewhat large house in the middle of a busy row of old houses and repurposed as student accommodations. Music piles from large speakers inside, and there are people in every corner you look, holding drinks off any type imaginable. Hemlock leads you up the steps and past two beefy-looking guys who smile and nod at them, and the two of you enter. You wonder if Hemlock is popular. Finding a relatively unoccupied corner, you make yourself comfortable before Hemlock leads in to talk close to your ear. What can I get you to drink? Uh, rum and cola, vodka and cranberry, gin and tonic, I don't like alcohols. Get me a... I'm, I'm feeling pretty fruity, so get me a gin and tonic. Yeah, I wouldn't mind a gin and tonic. My word! How posh! Alright, alright. You nudge your shoulder playfully and they laugh, heading off for the drinks. You take a few moments while Hemlock is away to scan the crowd. And what a crowd it is. You figure it must be rush week or something. You see the return with two of the same drink. Offer you whichever one you like. Thanks. Ain't no thing. You take a sip of your drink, and the first thing you notice is that Hemlock got their ratios perfect. Not too weak, not too strong, but... I mean, okay, I guess some people like it, like, you know, right in the middle, but for me, I love it real strong. Like, I'm just saying. The second thing you notice is that you can't stop drinking it. You know logically you should pace yourself, but it's just so good! And finally, you notice that Hemlock's gaze on you has gotten a little... intense. Yeah, sorry. Guess I was thirsty. Now you get sort of a staring lion. You're just too cute. You feel parched in a way no drink could ever satisfy. They look desperately to Hemlock. Hemlock, I need to get out of here. I need to be with you. Hemlock looks at you with what can only be described as approval. I got you, lion. Come with me. Hemlock takes your hand and leads you twisting uh, through a dense crowd upstairs. Or maybe it's downstairs? Your head is spinning. You don't know what direction you're being led in anyway. You're simply at the mercy of wherever Hemlock decides to take you. Eventually, you end up in a bedroom, seemingly miles away from the party thumping beyond the door. Hemlock holds you upright, the only thing tethering you to reality. So your grip on what exists beyond Hemlock is tenuous at best. Hemlock. Oh, God, I need you so bad. That's right, Lion. Feel how good it is to need... Oh my God, I am really going through it now. The room spins uncontrollably. This isn't right. You realize on some level, but before you can do anything about it. What? You humans are such a trip. I swear, I never get sick of you. You look between Hemlock's beautiful, terrifying eyes and a pocket knife they currently have buried in your ribcage. Huh. Hemlock? Aw, oh, come on, sunshine. You can do better than that. Then you sink that knife into your chest again, and the thought of calling for help briefly crosses your mind. But they seem to sense it before you can will your vocal cords to obey. You shove their palm down the front of your pants to squeeze, and the only sound you find yourself able to force out is a gurgle moan. 
You shouldn't be reacting this way. You don't know why you still feel any pleasure at all. But you crave more. You grab Hemlock's wrist that's currently on your pants and brace yourself on them, running your hips into the hand despite, or perhaps because of, the knife sticking out of your chest. <laughs> more. The grin widens. That's more like it. Oh! Frick! They slowly remove their blade from your ribcage, making a soft moan as it slides out of you. Your vision swirls in pain and ecstasy, watching them lick your blood from their knife, both of you shuddering in pleasure. Oh, sunshine, you really are a snack. You clutch at their arm and you can't hold it back anymore. You come in their palm from some ethereal force you can't explain, making your pain irresistible. It's that block of Faye! Look at you. They lean in to kiss you, and their lips touch yours. You feel them say something. Goreb Maithagat. You feel the li life slip out of you. You could be happier. No! But that's the first time I got a bad ad on the first try. So regardless of what you choose at the party with Hemlock, like, it all ends the same. So well, I'm going to suggest something else. I was hoping for something a little more low-key. Loud and clear. I know a quiet spot that's really something this time of day. How about I take you there? I love that. All right, follow me. The building Hemlock takes you to is a shabby old warehouse on the outskirts of town, bordering the woods. They guide you in, but let you take your time exploring. They have various tags and mementos of previous visitors, and vines have begun reclaiming the building. Evening light filters in through the cloudy and broken windows, highlighting the dust boats gently disturbed by your activity. The whole place gives you a serene feeling, almost like you stepped into another realm that isn't quite real. You look back to find Hemlock waiting for you at the stairs. Come, check this out! You approach, looking wary of the stairs, but Hemlock holds out their hand. Don't worry, I'll do this all the time. You take the hand and fold them up the stairs, then down a long hallway, ending in a room full of vines. Set up amongst the broken remnants of the warehouse and nestled carefully in the plants are pieces of worn, comfortable-looking furniture draped in clean blankets. The are strands of painted wooden beads and crystal pendants hanging from debris, and you can smell the mix of strong herbs that you know keep insects away. Welcome to my secret sanctuary. It's beautiful. Hemlock, this place is beautiful. Thank you for taking me here. That means a lot. I'm glad you like it. Make yourself at home. They make themselves comfortable in a, in a chaise lounge with a kilt over it. Uh, sit on the lap or sit across from them. Yeah, I'm gonna sit on their lap. Smirk at them, you decide to be a bit cheeky. The seat taken? Second best seat in the house. Hemlock gives you a sly look and you blush. So, Hamlock, do you live around here? Do you live in town? Yeah, rent a little house near the university. It's great. We've got access to all the parties I could possibly want. Sounds a little exhausting. Now yeah, my family throws big parties a lot, so it reminds me of home. Are you a student? Are you a student at the university? Kinda. I'm auditing some classes, but I'm not technically enrolled. I'm mostly just trying to get... Uh, interesting life experience before I have to get back home to do my duties. Your duties? Yeah, I gotta recruit someone to work full-time for my boss, who's also my mom. What kind of job is it? Mercenary work. You both laugh, but part of you wonders if they were joking. Uh, do you have family nearby? Does your family live in town? Ah, uh, they live, uh... Hamlet looks thoughtfully for a moment. Well, most of the family's in Ireland, but there are some of us scattered pretty much everywhere. Whoa, you have a lot of siblings. Oh yeah, huge family. What is everyone who buries it or gets adopted? People have a way of finding a place in a family. As the sun starts sinking lower and lower, the amber light that streams in seems to halo both of you. Hemlock has stretched himself out languidly, sprawled out with no regard of your personal space. Not that you particularly mind. I've had a really amazing time, Hemlock. Something about this place is so enchanting, I never want to leave. An unreadable expression crosses their feature before they smile at you. You never have to leave, Lion. This place can be just for us. No one else. I'll never make you leave. They sit up, leaning in close to you. You can smell their sweet breath and the fancy oils they use in their hair. Your head spins a little. You don't remember it being so warm in the warehouse. Their proximity is comforting but overwhelming. But what about my old life? You find the plea weak in your mouth. You suddenly couldn't care less about your old life. Did you even have anything before Hemlock? Hemlock's smirk grows. Their canines look bigger than you remember, 
their amber eyes glittered gold in the evening light. What about your old life, sunshine? I'll take care of you. For some reason, this answer satisfies you. You feel like you've given a part of yourself to them. That's okay. Before you realize what you were doing, you, you're you leaning in towards Hemlock like you were being pulled in by gravity. They meet you halfway, bringing their hands up to support you as you melt into their kiss. Don't worry about anything else. Why does he have a golden penis? Hemlock lies with you for a few moments, stroking your face and petting your arms. Don't worry about a thing, Lion. They'll take care of you from now on. You don't know what they have in mind for you after this, and frankly, you don't care. You look forward to belonging to Hemlock, whatever that entails. Good ending. You lived. Okay, so apparently you can get an alternate good ending with Hemlock if you don't give them your name. So, like, you're supposed to joke here. Because, like, Hemlock is a face. So, like, giving them your name is not really a good idea. So, yeah, let's joke. That's Sir Duckington III Esquire. I'll have you know. Learn some respect. Jeez. They burst out laughing a little louder. That is appropriate for the library. But you can call me Lion. Nice to meet you, Lion. So, Lion, haven't seen you around here before. What are you up to? Were you going to skip ahead to, like, the warehouse? Uh, and after all the questions, I'll, I'll bring you right there. You'll have to forgive me, Lion. I've been a terrible host. Can I offer you something to drink? Or maybe... They fish for something in the pocket of their sweater and pull out a tin. They open to reveal several nicely rolled blunts. Um, give them something instead? You gently push aside their hand that has the tin, hearing them click it shut as they give you a mildly inquisitive look. What if I want to give you something instead? It'd be rude of me to refuse the gift. You lean in to kiss them, and they're already bringing their hands up to hold your face close to theirs. You both tumble back onto the chaise lo lounge with your knees between Hemlock's thighs. Hemlock moans when your tongues sweep over their teeth, and you can't help but notice how sharp they are. Your hands trace the gentle curves and tight muscle of their body, slipping beneath their clothes to play with the jewelry that decorates their nipples. You're rewarded with a cute sigh and the hips pressing hot against your leg, and you teasingly grind it into them. <sighs> You're a tease, lion. Hemlock waits for the two of you to catch your breath and pulls you up to lie on the lounge with them, enjoying listening to your heartbeat. You know, my honor dictates that I'm indebted to you now. You give them a devious grin. Don't worry, I'll make it worth your while. You lived. One last route to go. Let's go. Right, let's go down to the bakery. You're a little hungry. The warm aroma of bread and pastries washes over you the minute you open the door. You take a deep inhale and wander over to one of the counters, perusing the treats behind the glass. Welcome. Anything you're in mood for today? Hello, what the heck? A guy pops in from the kitchen to address you from behind the counter. Oh. Yeah, I'm just about to take some things off the cooling racks. You feeling sweet or savory? Um, well, I'm up for something sweet right now. Sweet, please. You got it. He disappears back into the kitchen for a moment, returning with a basket heaped full of fruit danishes. Steam curls above them delicately. Go ahead. This one's on me. He winks. No one to look a gift danish in the mouth. You gratefully take one. Take a bite. It's easily one of the better pastries you've had. Whoa. This is amazing. Thanks for this. I'm Lion, by the way. I'm Clover. It's great to meet you, Lion. I have to say, your baking is really excellent. Do you own this place? Yeah, I wish. I'm apprenticing with the owner. I'm still in culinary school. That's impressive. What do you do when you're not baking? Usually I'm out painting. Love to watercolor. He takes out his phone and shows you some photos of his work. They're mostly landscapes, some portraits, and a few scenes. Whoa, these are beautiful. I recognize some of these places. Yeah, most of them are around here. I'm just about to clock out if you want. I could take you to the beach where I'm working on my current piece. I'll even pack us a few treats. Go with him, suggest something else. Yeah, let's go with him. Sure, I'd love to see what you're working on. Great, let me grab a few things so we can go. The two of you walk along the beach and look for the right spot for Clover to set up his paints. Here we go, this is the spot. He helps you set up a small picnic blanket from his bag and pulls out a container with... Some more pastries he made. Once you're comfortable, he pulls out a pad of watercolor paper and a set of paints. Sorry this is boring. Don't feel like you have to watch the whole time. I'll wander around the waters if I need a break. He nods and begins working, carefully filling parts of the canvas with paint as he captures the sunset of the waves. 
He stood up pleasantly, eating pastries and watching his eyes flit from the horizon to his work and back again before speaking up. So, Clover, uh, let's see. Do you live around here? I do, kinda. I live, uh, well, let's just say there's more than one lock on my door. But it really doesn't matter me. It really doesn't bother me. Everyone in my building keeps to themselves mostly, and one day I'll be able to move out. He looks hopeful. Do you have any pets? He smiles fondly. I have a cat named Sasha and a dog named Blitz, but they live back home with my family. Yeah, I couldn't take them with me when I left home, but I get pictures of them all the time. He shows you pictures of them on his phone. Ah, how cute. Thanks, I love them. Do you have any siblings? Uh-huh. I have a younger sister and a younger brother, Cat and Riley. My sister just started college and my brother's in high school. Do you get to see them a lot? Sometimes when they come out to visit. My parents are fine having nothing to do with me, so I don't travel home very often. Sounds lonely. It's not, really. I'm happier now than I ever was back home. I'm gonna head down to the water. Your eyes glaze over a bit, watching his hypnotic brush strokes. You shake your head to snap out of it. Yeah, I'm gonna walk along the water a bit. Okay, have fun. You leave his shoe and he enter the picnic blanket and walk down the shore, letting the chilly twilight surf wash over your feet. Walking over the water's edge, you find a pretty seashell. Get startled by some seaweed that brushes against your ankle and pause to watch the sunset. After spending enough time by the tide, you make your way back up to the picnic blanket. Welcome back. Thanks. How's the painting co- Oh! You look at his painting and he said it. You. Setting at the water's edge and staring off into the sunset. It looks beautiful. You were just so inspiring. I had to paint you. I don't know what to say. Shyly, he leans in and kisses you. You respond by cupping his jaw and tilting your head, sliding your tongue past his lips. You don't realize when the paints got set aside, but before you know it, Clover is in your lap with his arms draped around your shoulders. After a while, you both pull apart for air. I've had such a wonderful time with you, but I don't want to end here. Will you come back to my place with me? Uh, be impatient. I'm gonna be impatient. I will be impatient. You shake your head and pull him against you hard. I can't wait. Let's find somewhere private. He shivers at your urgency. Under the pier? No one ever checks there. Especially not this late. You nod, and the two of you pack up your things. Under the pier, it's cool and smells like salt-soaked wood. You find a dry corner of soft sand piled up near one of the posts. Here, let me. Clover hooks his finger into your pads and pulls you towards him, undoing them and dropping to his knees. Oh, hey there. You lean back against the large wooden support of the pier and catch your breath, running a hand over your hair before readjusting your pads. Clover fixes himself up and stands, and you pull him against you teasingly. Yeah, I hope this means I'll see you again. If it means fresh pastries and head, I think we can arrange something. He laughs. I look forward to next time, then. You lift. All right, let's just go home with him then. All right, let's go back to your place. You nod eagerly, helping him pack up your picnic before leaving the beach. You make it back to Clover's complex that's in desperate need of some attention. His small apartment, despite the state of the building overall, is clean and cheery looking, if somewhat cluttered with plants. There are modest per personal touches throughout, but it doesn't look like he owns much. It's not much, but it's home. The two of you don't waste time making your way into his even smaller bedroom, where you pin him to the door once he closes it. This seems to steal the air from his lungs. So, not sure if you have a preference, but do you want to top or should I? Ooh, I'll top, I'll top. You purr and lean in to bite his neck. I'll top this time. There, whatever you need is in the end table. His knees are weak as you release him. You both lay there and catch your breath in the afterglow, but the clover finally speaks up. So, you think you'll ever stop by the bakery again? You laugh and tuck a lock of hair behind his ear. Only if it means I get more treats like this. You lift. Right, I'm pretty sure this is going to lead me to a bad end, but I'm going to suggest something else. You know, as long as we're going in that direction, how would you feel about going to the pier? Oh my gosh, that sounds like a blast! It's been ages since the last time I went to the pier. Lead the way. The sound of crashing waves and midway games fill your ears as the two of you approach the boardwalk. Wow, it's so busy. Must be a good day for it. The two of you wander the pier, checking out everything the amusement park has to offer. What do you want to do first, Lion? Yeah, let's uh, play some games. You gaze longingly at the cheesiest plush toy you've ever seen, dangling from the prize array of a midway game. 
Clover? I need that. You grab Clover by the wrist and tug him towards the stall. A dart throwing game with balloons lined up along the back. Pull for you with your th throw. So Clover swears the darts were dull. But the game operator thinks you're a cute couple and gives you each a constellation keychain of a dolphin. Sorry I couldn't win you the toy, but look, now we match. You don't feel so bad about not winning. Uh, let's get a snack. As you're about to speak, your stomach growls loudly. Yeah, yeah, I can use the snack. Me too. I think I smell kettle corn back there. The two of you make your way up to the kettle corn cart and pay for a bag to split, taking turns scooping up handfuls. Clover tosses a piece into the air, narrowly catching it in his mouth and looks triumphant. Your own attempt is not so graceful. Nice catch. You throw a piece at him. Go on some rides. The sound of laughter and delighted shrieks from the rides is far too tempting. Let's go on some rides. Ooh, can we just can we do the haunted house first? You wait in line for the haunted house ride. Weave up to the front until you're guided into the two-person car shape to look like a skull. The car goes into a dark tunnel ahead of you and for a moment, you can't see anything. I'm here if you're scared. There's a hint of mischief to his voice. You put your hand on his thigh. Your car jerks around a sharp corner and the right hydraulics squeak and hiss as you're confronted by spooky ghosts lit by black lights. None of you could help jumping and you turn and laugh at each other. You're not certain what the rest of the riot looked like, really, but you both emerge back into normal light with goofy grins on your faces. The two of you stand side by side, leaning against the railing of the pier, watching the last rays of the sun setting over the horizon when Clover finally speaks up. I've had an amazing time with you, Lion. You smile and sling your arm around Clover's waist. It doesn't have to end here, you know. Clover shivers and bites his lip. If you want, we can go back to my place. Uh... Oh! Okay, so I just checked. Going home with him will lead to the same good end as we got before. But being impatient will lead to the bad end when you're at the pier. So I'm going to be impatient. You lean in to purr into his ear. I don't think I can wait. He shivers and grabs your hand, eager to lead you. I know a spot. Follow me. The two of you weave through the dense crowd. And no one seems to pay you any mind as you slip past them from the ball walk down to the sand. Clover leads you down under the pier far from prying eyes and guides you to a tucked away corner. He pins you up against a large wooden support and kisses you, hard and urgent, and your fingers tangle in his hair. Clover. He trills his way down your neck, leaving soft kisses and teasing bites in his wake. You feel him undo your pants and slip his hand underneath your clothes, trailing his fingers against you in a way that makes your knees weak. Lion, I just can't get enough of you. You're so perfect. You feel yourself slipping further into the haze of Clover's teasing, his hands and his mouth make you dizzy. His touches become more needy, like he's hungry for the feeling of your skin beneath his palms, and he's shaking his grip. You know with the way he's working, you won't last long. You tremble and repeat his name softly, too wrapped up in chasing that high to notice his own labored breathing. Blissfully, you let the wooden support hold you up while you come to your senses, but before the aftershocks even leave your body. Did you just stab me? You're too shocked to scream. Clover stands pressed against you, clutching a butterfly knife that he's buried in your gut with a twisted grin spread across his flushed face. I love you, Lion. I love you too much to let anyone else have you. Clover, no. He drags the knife through your flesh, your blood splattering onto your, his jeans and screams finally managing to rip from your throat. It's swallowed by the joyful screams from the amusement park above. My guy! Clover reaches up to cup your face, still holding the knife in you. Shh, it's okay. I just need to be close to you. Closer than anyone else. You understand, right? The head spins violently. No, you don't understand. How could you? The thing was going so well, but then... He slides you down to sit slumped against the pillar before climbing into your lap. Pulling the knife out, he brings it to his lips and licks it, shivering at the taste of your blood. There, your insides look so pretty, lion. Clover's expression is adoring, and you feel his grip tighten. Lion! Oh, God! He shudders and buries himself deep in your organs, and your world finally goes dark. I love you, Lion. I'll never forget you. Well, that's the way to go. Fun. But anyway, that was Do or Die. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do want to play this for yourselves, link to the game will be in the description below. And yes, I had to cut out quite a few scenes. Uh, they will be up on my Patreon. I've linked that in the pinned comments below. So hey, go ahead, check it out. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. 
I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day, and as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.